and welcome to Off the Press, which is a newspaper review program where we take a look at the national dailies, dissect it and try to make sense of it as much as we can and as much as time can allow. And to do so with me still in studio is Ayeni Anihuvi. Good to still have you. Thank you very much. Now let's look at Thank what's happening in our world through the faces of our national dailies this morning. We shall begin with the Punch newspaper. It will be displayed, I believe. And it says, petrol price, marketers seek loans, DPR enforces compliance. That story is there on page 20 of the Punch newspaper. And foreign reserves shared $3.02 billion in three months. That's on page 21 of the Punch newspaper. Right to uh, there is federal government begs U.S. billionaire for ventilators, withdraws appeal and apologizes. On page 13, I'm sure you all saw that uh, yesterday on Twitter. Lufthansa and Air France evacuate 637 Europeans uh, from Nigeria. That story is also on page 19 of the Punch newspaper as the concerns for COVID-19 continue to escalate. And government finds 3,550 contacts concerned as cases reach 190. That's uh, the COVID-19 in Nigeria already. Now, Oshun Cote d'Ivoire returnees patients rise to 18. And Lagos discharge 11 patients. That's a bit of good news. And 248 on self-isolation in oil. If you scroll up a bit, you'll find a picture story. Uh, there's a picture story there. Uh, which is already displayed of, again, uh, men of the road safety trying to enforce the restriction order. We have that story there. And to the top bottom there, we see conduct through a thorough probe into a Kure explosion. That story is on page eight. The federal government, is, uh, federal government agency is asking. And Kogi commissioner allegedly assaults and rapes the beauty queen. That story is on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And lastly, Atiku denies his planning to distribute cash. Okay, that story again is on page 16. So we encourage you to take a, grab a copy of the, the Punch newspaper. And, but I have you here. Let's talk about this. I, I feel like we should begin with good news. Um, yes. There are some cases of recoveries of yes. COVID-19. I mean, it, it gives us hope. What, what, what do you think? I think it's, it's beautiful because the truth is we do have more cases of people who recover than mm -hmm. people who have died. We have more people who are recovering who are yet to be confirmed. They mm -hmm. have to go through the second testing because they're tested twice mm -hmm. before they come out. And when we say more of the positive things that are coming out of this rather than the negative, mm -hmm. for example, every news you listen to, every radio, every Every, every every note that is being played mm -hmm. is COVID, 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 COVID. And so when we hear more of the people recovering, recovering, mm -hmm. recovering, maybe when we see them running, doing exercises and, and things mm -hmm. like that, it gives more positive uh, um, out, outlook mm -hmm. to what is going on. It's mm -hmm. not all gloom and doom right. because the thing, actually, the coronavirus is not really immediately as deadly. Mm -hmm. It's not really deadly. If the person has an underlining health condition, condition that has compromised their immune system, right. then they are at greater risk. Mm -hmm. But if you have a strong immune system, and getting a strong immune system comes from get, taking vitamin C regularly, mm -hmm. eating fruits, eating vegetables, it builds up your immune system. So the resistance to COVID mm -hmm. is actually more internal right. than external. Mm -hmm. External, that is you prevent yourself from getting, from getting infected. Mm -hmm. Internal, you keep social distance the way we are. Distance <laughs> right. And then internal, because mm -hmm. it has got to do with your immune system. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone is SS, for example, which is prevalent in Nigeria, mm -hmm. or the person has AS, they already have what is called oxy oxygenation mm -hmm. challenges because their which blood is? vessels, their blood vessels cannot flow freely right. because of the sickle of their cells. Right. The sickle of their cells disrupts their blood vessels. Because of that, their immune system is not as strong. Right. So if they contact the disease, Sorry, they are yeah. more at risk than mm -hmm. anybody else who does not have that genotype. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, it's good that you're bringing this uh, different perspective into the matter. And much as we want to, we know how serious it is. We also know that, yes, there's a bit of hope. People yes. are coming out and people are recovering and it's not a death sentence, sentence. thankfully. All right, so, uh, let's move on. Um, we also have other stories here. Conduct thorough probe into Akure explosion. You know, it looks like 
we are all now distracted, so to speak, yes. because of COVID-19. But we hope that, um, yes, that's... There are still things going on in the country mm -hmm. apart from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. There are explosions, there are security issues, there are humanitarian issues, there are vulnerable issues like the lady who was raped, unfortunately. Yeah. Those type of cases, someone is going to rise up and take her case because mm -hmm. I don't know how strong she is yeah. to actually rise up and follow mm -hmm. through on the case herself yeah. for her to I get mean, justice. Bit, yeah, a bit of background to that story. Um, it, it, there was a video, first of all, there was a picture when it happened, you know, she posted a picture of the beating and and so many people came out to say, oh, this is photoshopped. And of course, we do know that there are incidences of photoshopping yes, and all of that. So she made another video to say, oh, this is what happened. She had made a post um, uh, and on Facebook or one of the social media platform and so the commissioner of water resources in Kogi State, it was, you know, reference to him, picked her up and according to the video that, you know, she publicly made, uh, she was raped and um, she mm -hmm. was battered and all of that. So many things that she said there. Just like you said, there are people now who had also taken up that case. Some lawyers are saying, you know okay. what, we need to ask justice for this person. You know, when those who are supposed to represent us, those who are in position of authority, are seen not to be doing what they are supposed to do, then it is worrying, you know. Yeah, so I agree with you completely. Uh, Atiku denies his, his planning to distribute cash. But, you see, it, it, there's this mindset that has been given to everyone. Yes, it's true. The Holy Book says money, money answers all things. Mm -hmm. Money does resolve all things. But it, we, we, the money mindset is, has been corrupted because right. there's the idea that because there is money, it has to be spent. Mm -hmm. Because there is money, it has to be distributed. There are infrastructures that need to be built in, a, in an emergency. Mm -hmm. there, are so many, there are so many things that need to be purchased in an emergency. So by the time you sit down with an, with an, with an economist mm -hmm. or an accountant, and they give you the lowdown of actually what the federal government is purchasing to actually find COVID, mm -hmm. people will not be thinking of a, the, the fact that the uh, Atiku is giving money. Because if he is giving money, I don't know how much money he's got in his bank account to mm -hmm. give everybody the amount of money they say he's actually distributing to people. Mm, I agree with you. All right, I think in the interest of time, uh, we may just as much move to other newspaper. We'll take the Nation newspaper, I believe it will be displayed, and it says, how we battled virus by China. Um, and that's the story there. Thank you, it's already displayed, and it's on page 17 of the Nation newspaper. Uh, Minister to Versities restart session through virtual teaching. I completely agree. That story is on page 26. And I'm getting better, says Atiku's son. Pray for health uh, workers. He prays for health workers. And that story also, you can find it on page 5 of the Nation newspaper, already displayed there on your screens. And it's, we also have Troops launch offensive against insurgents. Uh, Oyetola signs bill on COVID-19. That's on page 27 of the Nation newspaper. And if you scroll down, uh, you would see COVID-19. 11 patients out of hospital as cases rise to 190, just what we're talking about. And we also have picture stories there displayed on your screen of those who have been tested for COVID-19, and we have a picture story of the wife of the president, First Lady Aisha Buhari, hugging her daughter after her self-isolation. She's also back and in good health. And then to the right, we see figures there displayed of the COVID-19 global cases, uh, running into 1.5 million there, global cases, that is. And then for Nigeria, is 119. Again, we, we, we would really request that we see the cases of those who have recovered. I think it's important. We need to be deliberate, you know, about it. Anyways, that, that's to say that uh, to, uh, people are also recovering, as Annie, Annie, Annie and I were just talking about uh, uh, briefly. Now, two, die to, two to die for murder of Oshun Varsity yes. student. Uh, the story is there, and soldier shoots man dead on page four, and that's um, one of the videos that also went viral. We saw from Delta. Which of the stories are catching your attention? This Actually, morning? it's very encouraging to see that right from the top, from the presidency of Nigeria, we can see the good news mm -hmm. that we were talking about happening. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I pray that people don't look at this again and think that it's big man disease because right. there are some people who say that this is big man disease. Yes. The lady is not 
positive. She is negative. Mm -hmm. So she has actually traveled, come back. She is negative. Mm -hmm. And also, also good to see that uh, we can see the testing. I understand the testing of the COVID, um, the testing for COVID mm -hmm. to see whether someone is um, has it or not. not. The testing is not really very nice mm. because you have to go to the back of the throat yes. and the back of the nose. As this and picture, there's a picture. I hope they are able to display. That. Yes, mm. but, and these are the times when those sensitive parts of our body are susceptible mm -hmm. to not just COVID-19, but other things. Right. So really and truly, even the testing areas that the government is talking about, we would like to know the particular testing areas. Where can I go to in Lagos? Mm -hmm. Where can I go to Atibada? Where can I go to in Abuja? How accessible? Need, how accessible are they? Are, they go, are we going to get there and people are going to queue up again and start banging into one another and talking about distancing? Social distancing. Social how distancing. do we achieve it? So you see, mm. administration is not a cup of tea. <laughs> mm, administration is not a cup of tea. I completely agree with you on that matter. And yes, and then we saw the, the you know, um, getting better at Tiku's son says, and then yes. he prays for health workers. One of the things that he mentioned particularly, you know, in that short video, which I think is really, really essential, is the fact that he encouraged people to stop, you know, spreading fake news. news during this time. You know, I mean, not just this time, no one should, we shouldn't be purveyors of uh, fake news. So I think it's one of the things that we, need, we are battling with, even when we talk about COVID-19, even in the figures, projections, you know, sometimes you see so many information that are not from reliable sources. And I, I think even in this program, as we always do, it's, it's important to encourage people to always seek for reliable, verified, uh, verified sources. Mm -hmm. The NCDC is there, the World Health Organization is there, as opposed to WhatsApp, there are a lot of What's beyond, messages? beyond that as well, actually, Dr. Pat Utomi yeah. is heading a body where they are fighting against misinformation and there's some money that they have put out mm -hmm. that to fight misinformation. So misinformation is something that has become really crucial in the environment, right. not just the social media, not after COVID, beyond COVID, before COVID, now COVID, and mm -hmm. beyond all that, they are really fighting, mm -hmm. actually gets taken out a very actual fight against misinformation. And for, for you to get to that kind of level of Dr. Patu Tomi being mm -hmm. the leader of it, you can see how, how crucial it is to deal with this. Because unfortunately, it is the wrong information that people read and yeah. take it to be the actual truth. Mm -hmm. They never bother to re actually research and cover what the actual news is, what mm -hmm. the truth is. So really, um, it's good to hear that they are doing that. And that's another thing that's a positive thing that is coming out of all mm. this. All right, thank Dealing you. With misinformation. Yeah, um, let's go to the Guardian newspaper in the interest of time. Uh, we can, you know, in this program, we try to dissect as much as time <laughs> would allow. So we'll go to the Guardian newspaper, already displayed, thankfully, there. And it says, lockdown incites anger. Uh, that's the major story for for the Guardian newspaper there, and Senate and others worry as presidency delays PIB. That story is also on the front page, but it's continued on page six of the Guardian newspaper. And then we also have the figures there as displayed of, of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria, particularly. Uh, it's interesting what uh, the Guardian newspaper has done. They are focusing on the cases in Nigeria, and these are the kind of resources that we need. So, you know, uh, by each state is is detailed there by each state of the, the COVID-19. And we have Buhari orders prompt payment of salaries over COVID-19. How nice. This is good news. We'll, t we'll come to it. And the federal government apologizes for begging American billionaire for ventilators. I won't wonder. <laughs> and then autumn 6, arrest of sit-at-home order violators. You know, one of the things I saw, uh, one of the things I saw in the news is somewhere in Rwanda, uh, when you disobey the sit at home order, they collect the people and they take them to the stadium and ask them to sit there for the whole day. If you won't stay at home and the authorities get you, they stay you know, outside. They stay, they stay in the state, they just leave them there in the stadium, you know, for the whole day. And I'm wondering, <laughs> you know, when, uh, when the governor, the governor, Autumn says there that they're going to arrest sit at home other violators, how can we really get people to sit at home? How, how do we do this? Amaka, the truth about it is that it's difficult. 
it's difficult to uh, tell people to sit at home doing nothing. And some of these people don't really have accommodation. Mm. They, maybe they might be squatting somewhere. And their relief every day, for, relief for the person squatting them and for the person being squatted is to go out and come back at night mm. just of a place to sleep. Some people at home, there is so much going on that just that going out is what enables them to clear their heads and have a, a healthy mindset to meet with the people that they have at home. And now they are being forced to stay in the same place. Um, like someone said, he said, if you, say, if you give a stay at home to a family of six that lives in a mansion with, a whole house, um, with rooms of eight, mm. it's different from when you tell people who live, six people living in one bedroom to stay at home for a whole day. This is crippling to the human mindset. Now, I think the stay at home thing is nice, mm -hmm. but then government should please allow people to release it within a number of yards. Right. Because even with the prison, somebody who is in isolation, mm -hmm. the person is allowed to come out two hours a day to walk around. Yeah. Because staying at home, doing nothing for six, for 14 days, mm -hmm. with, for people who stay in cramped accommodations, this is a mindset, a mind... Um, a mind crippling thing mm. that can cause other things. Right. So government should please try to let the police know. Let people go out within a yard. I mean, they could let move. Them go out, move. They could move, yeah. Be able to move. Mm -hmm. Move on their streets. Mm -hmm. Walk on their streets. Say mm -hmm. hello to the next person. But keeping the distance. But keeping the distance. distance. Yeah. You are in front of your house. I'm outside your house and we're chatting. Mm -hmm. And we are saying hello. Mm -hmm. We are not obstructing the, the distance mm -hmm. um, law. Mm -hmm. But we are still able to interact Mm. That is what people think they can no longer interact. They mm. can no longer see what that is what can be boggling to the mindset. And this brings me to another reality. Uh, there, there was, a, I mean, someone. There was a video of um, a very uh, known, well-known person who just went up, you know, full blast. And what was the the problem? No lights in the rest state. She said, this is day three or day four of the lockdown and there's been no lights. I mean, that's just, that, that's the least that the, you know, the government or those who are responsible sh uh, for it should give the people. If you ask someone to stay at home, give them lights at least. So many people have stocked, you know, their fridge and freezers yes. and all of that with food. And then there is no light. And the know. food goes bad. And the food goes bad. And that's they have trouble. to dispose of it. And, and the bin is not being collected. There's Double toxic, there, yes, there's toxic fumes all over the whole environment. Mm -hmm. It's it's not it's unclean. Yeah, I mean it's important also, you know, while we while the people do their own parts, that our our own government also would do its own part in terms of yes, can we have lights? Can the people have water? Can they have basic amenities? amenities. That is their right Made actually. No, people are not it's not asking for too much. Let's have the At right all. thing uh, during this time. Okay, thank you so very much. I, I can see that we're running out of time, but we have one more paper, which is Business Day. Uh, reprieve for Nigeria as oil prices jump on Trump's intervention. I believe it will be displayed. But before that, coronavirus broken health centers in villages put 100 million rural dwellers at risk. You know, the same thing that we're talking about. How, how does this translate to different reality, the COVID-19 pandemic? How, it's not... The situation is not the same for those of us who are in the urban areas and those who are in the rural areas. I guess, you know, the challenges that are, are, are different, uh, so to speak. Um, and just like we said, Nigeria is a fragile state. Mm -hmm. And the state of our frag uh, fragility is things like this that come out. A hundred million people, no health care. I pray, it's a prayer that by the grace of God, the coronavirus will not get to them. And mm -hmm. thank goodness we have not recorded any coronavirus from those type of areas. Right. Because if we did, I think it's time for government to actually look into that situation and see reasons why they need to put the interests of Nigerians mm -hmm. beyond self beyond politics, right. beyond all those things that crippled them from doing the right thing with regards to people. All right. And I must say that we've had a robust uh, conversation this morning. And this is as yes. much as time can it allow can us. Allow us. Uh, so thank you so very much, Ayeni, uh, for always you know, coming and bringing different perspectives and aspects to it. Thank and you for having me. And this is also where we're going to call it a wrap for Off the Press this morning. We will continue Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. I I am Amaka Okoye saying have a great day and please keep safe.